We're pleased to have a distinguished panel today to talk about bear trap designs and uh, managers' perspective about them in the field. So first up, uh, we have uh, Michael Orlando. He's the bear management coordinator for the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Uh, he's been working with wildlife for 29 years and 26 of those uh, with bears. So he's going to lead off the panel. Hi, everybody. Um, so uh, it's a very interesting topic. I'm super excited to um, uh, talk about uh, our, our bear traps. Um, we've been using um, Cambrian style traps uh, for since 2009. Um, it's very rare that we're actually using culvert traps anymore. Um, you can see if, if you guys aren't familiar with these Cambrian style traps, they were developed out in Cambrian College and Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources can, uh, uh, joint project. Um, they work really well here in Florida. One of the main issues uh, that we have down here is heat, obviously. And um, so we actually had um, back in 2006 or so, we had a bear die in one of our um, uh, culvert traps. And we thought, well, is there a different design? So we went ahead, started making these <clears throat> and had our first one deployed in 2009. And uh, we have, have not had a bear die in a trap since then. Um, so we're really pleased with using these Cambrian traps. And I'm going to go over a couple of things um, on, on some modifications that we've made to these traps. If you guys are interested, if you're using them or if you're interested in building them. Um, so there's a couple of things that uh, uh, we have designed and made a, made a modification to. So like I said before, we built our first Cambrian traps in 2009. Back then, they actually only cost about $2,500 to make, um, which was really inexpensive, mostly because we didn't have to buy a full length piece of culvert pipe um, and make multiple traps. Well, one, we could have them individually made. And then, of course, uh, through inflation and a number of other things, um, and uh, they're currently costing around $8,500 to have one made. But since 2009 to, to December of 2023, we've actually captured over 1,300 bears. It's probably like uh, 1,350 now since the, the first of the year, um, but uh, in bear management alone. And that doesn't include bear research, who's also using these traps. Um, and I know that they caught uh, a number of bears uh, over the last couple of summers uh, as they were using them. So uh, they're very easy to use. Uh, they were originally designed as a, a sort of a, a safer trap because the door swings down on counterbalances. So it's easier for cubs and um, people who, you know, accidentally uh, knock into it and that sort of thing. Um, but overall, we're really pleased with how the uh, Cambrian style cage traps um, have been uh, working down here in Florida. So <clears throat> one of the things that uh, we've modified over the years, just based on uh, the original design and, and you know, the numbers of bears that we've caught in them, uh, we've made some uh, modifications. And I have all of this stuff in a presentation and um, a PDF. So if you guys are interested in making them or updating yours, um, I can provide all these information, uh, these uh, modifications to you. Um, we added some extra weld uh, in uh, bars, crossbars, to make the um, expanded mesh a little bit more stiff. Um, early on, we actually had some problem, uh, problem with uh, some of the expanded metal that was uh, created. Um, and we did have one bear, only one in bear management escape from the trap where it actually popped some of the tack welds and ripped open the cage and the bear got out. But since we've made some of these modifications, we've had no bears escape from the trap since. Um, so it is something to actually think about. Um, the rolled steel we actually made on the top there, you can see at the bottom, uh, we noticed that if it's angle, it water will actually pool up in that big square on the top and it'll create rust holes in the top. Um, so we actually have this rolled steel and the water doesn't pool up. So we have no rust issues. 
Um, and then of course we have three inch ports for darting or using a jab stick. Mostly we use dart guns through those, through, through those or blow guns. And the reason why the ports are three inches long is because it's just about an inch longer than, or a half inch longer than a person's finger. Because when we first had them made, uh, they were much shorter and we had somebody sticking their fingers in through those holes to try to touch the bear when we showed up at their house. So we made the ports longer. So then you can't actually stick your fingers in and have them bitten off. Um, we also added aluminum uh, spare tire covers um, because probably most of you know this, uh, if you leave your traps out, you catch a, a yearling or cub inside, <clears throat> the female generally tries to destroy everything. And the first thing to go was the spare, was the spare tire. They would bite uh, the spare tire. We must have lost, I don't know, 10 spare tires um, in like a month's time a couple of years ago. So we were like, let's order these things, put the spare tires on. Um, we also ran the, ca the uh, cable, or now we're using Dyneema. Uh, so it's, some, it's also called Amsteel. It's a it's it's line uh, typically used in like for sailing and that sort of thing, um, but it's as strong as steel uh, at the same diameter, if not stronger. Um, and then it slides through that cable a whole lot easier. There's no binding. There, <clears throat> there's no memory of the cable that to get bound up uh, or uh, twisted. So we've been using um, Amsteel or Dyneema in those, and then we run the cable through the top so it's nice and, and smooth. The other thing we do is we um, have a, a little locking bar to hold the, the door open. It's um, affectionately called the holder bar um, because when we first got the traps, I was uh, asked a veterinarian friend of mine named Dr. Holder to look at a bear and the door came down and knocked her on the head. So we decided to make a modification to keep the door uh, upright. And um, so that's how the holder bar was invented. It's really nice. Actually, you could put locks in there and you could put bait inside so you could pre-bait um, the, uh, the trap before, you know, if you're trying to catch a specific bear or that sort of thing. Um, yeah, works really well. The other thing we actually added um, in Florida, we get roughly on average about 250, just over 250 bears killed on the roads every year. And because uh, you know we didn't want to have separate trailers, we actually turned the, uh, the trap into a trailer. So we added a winch to where the typical foot goes in the front. So if it's hooked up to your truck, you can put this winch on. And um, we added a ramp to the back, so it slides underneath. There's a ramp channel, you slide that ramp underneath there, just kind of like a U-Haul truck. You can move it, put it on top, and then slide it back under. Um, and then when you're picking up a dead bear on the side of the road, you just run out the, um, the strap, uh, hook it up, and um, uh, yeah. so I'll give you an example. Oh. Can you guys see that playing? No, but it's interesting because it's a still picture, but I see, I can hear it. Yeah, so. that's weird. Hold on a second. Let's see if it plays now. Yeah. There it goes. Sorry. So you can see with the ramp and the, uh, and the winch, pretty easy. Uh, and we have, believe it or not, everybody, we have very large bears in Florida. Uh, 760 pounds is our largest documented bear, and we're, and we're consistently catching and picking up roadkill bears that are in the 600 pounds. So um, the winch is imperative. We can't, you can't move those things without it really. So those are the modifications. Like I said, I have lots of other things to talk about. If you guys are interested, I could give you the PDF stuff. A couple of the other accessories that we use here in Florida is one called a Wilco box. Um, that's just short for Wiley Coyote. Um, I designed this thing a couple of years ago, and it's really to help when you have like a, you're trying to catch a family group, you have a female in the trap and you're trying to catch a cub or something that's too, won't be able to pull the bucket or trip the treadle. So this thing is basically a, a design where I put a, um, a receiver with a, a remote on it. It works off a 12 volt you know, drill battery. 
and it's all wired into a motor that it's just a door motor for a, for a car. And you can see you just put the box up on top and then you run. This is again Dyneema to the tr to the trigger and um, you can do it remotely. So you can see here in this video, I push the button, it pulls the trigger and you can do that for up to a hundred yards away, which is actually uh, really nice. So here's another example of uh, the Wilco box working. So we have the female and uh, the siblings caught in two other traps and this one uh, just wasn't coming around and pulling the bucket is really timid probably because it's the entire rest of the family was already captured. Um, and uh, we went ahead and hooked up the Wilco box. And you can see through the Cambrian trap, and this is why this accessory is so good, you can see the bear. And as soon as the bear gets all the way up to the front of the trap, I just push the button, door get closes, and we catch the bear. So again, a benefit of the Cambrian traps for us is actually to be able to see through it. Another one of the accessories we use quite frequently is this thermal imaging monocular. So we put it on white hot. And again, seeing through the Cambrian helps us out. And you, you know, these black bears here in Florida look like polar bears in, uh, when you're looking through them. Um, and then, so this was just actually a couple of nights ago. We have a female you can see caught in one trap in this yearling um, who is uh, basically just it wouldn't come near us, wouldn't come near the trap. And <clears throat> I sat patiently um, being torn up by mosquitoes in a corner, uh, watching through this um, infrared device. And then as the bear got close to the front, I went ahead and triggered the trap. And you can see, uh, and this is like, a, yeah, it's one almost, it's 1230 at night. So you can see that the door shut and we have mom and the yearling, um, a cub of last year, so almost a yearling now, uh, captured. So um, again, one of the benefits of the Cambrian trap for us is when we're trying to catch family groups and that sort of thing, being able to see through it, not only in the daytime for like the Wilco box, but also for the thermal imaging. Uh, we have been really successful in catching animals that we previously may have missed or weren't able to catch at all because they were too timid um, to pull on the, the triggers and that sort of thing. So those are just a couple of um, uh, you know modifications that we've made and some accessories that we use. And if again, if you guys are interested um, in the Cambrian traps themselves or um, any of the accessories, you know, uh, reach out to me and we can uh, we can exchange information. Um, and again, you know, releasing bears, we, uh, every, every uh, trap that we, we uh, set out, we put uh, remote cameras on. It tells us uh, their cell phone cameras. Um, and, uh, you know, so we can see what's going on. You can see if the bears are inside. Um, and then release them is actually really easy, too. So um, one of the other things, finally, is we actually been putting air tags on our traps. Uh, don't tell anybody. Don't tell any thieves that you know that this. But. We put air tags on um, uh, all of our traps so we could see where they are in real time and where they're located. Um, and that has actually been very useful to us as well, just uh, as an accessory. And that's it. I think I was on time, right? Yep. yep. All right, so um, what we're gonna do is go through our um, our panel, and then we're going to have open questions. So um, if you have questions for Mike, just we'll ask that you hold it so we make sure we get through the whole panel, um, and then we'll um, have the questions later. So um, next up my list is uh, Justine Valerius. She's a bear complex management specialist with Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. She's been working with wildlife for 10 years and seven of those with bears. So Justine, take it away. So thank you. Um, yeah, I'm a bear conflict specialist uh, in Northwest Montana from Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks. Um, so I'm gonna quickly just try and go through, we use a lot of traps, different styles of traps. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly go through um, their specs and pros and cons of each um, and, Ultimately, you know, what we're 
what we're trying to do is make sure we keep the animal's welfare uh, in mind and human safety when designing these straps. Um, so this first one uh, is an automated bear trap. We call it the ABT trap. Uh, it was made by Alter Enterprises, um, I think somewhere between 2009, 2010. Um, it was made so uh, biologists could use it remotely. So it had a video camera. Um, so, you know, we were able to, we'd be able to look in the trap, see who was caught. Um, if it was a non-target animal, we could remotely release it and then um, remotely set the trap again. Uh, however, um, long before my time, a bear did get in and destroy um, the, technical part of the box. So uh, it hasn't been in use in that sense um, for <laughs> quite some time, which is unfortunate, but it still functions as a great trap. Um, it's about nine feet tall with the frame. So it can be um, kind of a pain when you're going through thick vegetation on these uh, backcountry roads um, or trying to back it into a garage and you know, if you're wanting to work a bear up um, during hot summer days or cold winter days, uh, it's it's kind of a pain in that sense. It has it's about eight feet long, so kind of your typical standard size. Um, it's most it's all aluminum, so really lightweight. Uh, we keep we have all of our traps bolted to the trailers themselves, so I never end up taking them off, but. Um, it is nice to have more of a lightweight trap to move around. I What I really like uh, my trailers to have, and this is actually a newer trailer that we put this trap on. Um, the old trailer had a rear leg stand, so you could just kick those down. These we have to carry separate jacks to put underneath. So when you have these big, bigger bears come in up the ramp, they don't tip the trap over. It has a bigger diameter with, you know, 48 inches. Um, that's nice because these bigger bears can just walk right up into the trap, uh, less intimidating trying to walk into something smaller. It has two water troughs within it. Um, you want to make sure that when you're making these traps, you really think about all the edges inside of a trap. You want to limit them. These bears are thrashing around so much, so you don't want anything the bear's going to, catch claws on um, or cut themselves. Um, so we we like to have those water troughs smoothed out. And these, these water troughs in particular don't have uh, drain plugs. So that would be another nice added thing. Um, drain plugs are good to drain them from the outside so you don't have all that water and all the straw and debris that gets trapped in there just kind of um, clogging things up. The ramps um, are really great uh, for, you know, an easy access, these bears, for them to just walk right in. The metal grates can be kind of more of an uncomfortable, unnatural um, bottom. So sometimes I see bears kind of skeptical about stepping on it. For the most part, most of them just walk right in, but something something to think about. The trigger mechanism is hanging in the back. Um, and it has six holes. I like to have a lot of holes on the trigger mechanism so you can make sure that you're tying your bait in uh, securely enough. And then the strap also has a safety lock pin that um, I put in when I'm you know, going inside. And it's really important because you don't want to catch yourself. Um, and then it has a door lift stop mechanism. So when the door is down, there's no uh, way that bears can lift that trap. That door is not coming up. Um, they have pretty big windows. Um, the bars are over an inch apart, which is nice because I can fit my jab stick through those bars. Some of our traps I cannot. Um, so I like to have over an inch um, with the bars, the spacing of the bars. And then you can see there's the uh, separate jab ports too, but the big windows give you more access. And then there's two jab ports on both sides of the top of the traps. Um, so you can get a good neck shot, um, especially if the bear's sitting in the middle or a shoulder shot. 
there's a lot of small ventilation holes, which is good for the hot summer months. And it, like I, I think I said, mentioned before, it has drain holes on the bottom of the trap. So the bear's not sitting in any excess water um, or its urine. That stuff's going to drain out. And then we have two big aluminum traps. Um, these were made by Teton Welding. Uh, they're your standard eight feet long with a 42 inch diameter. Um, these are also made of aluminum. So again, these are bolted, but if we needed to, uh, they have the sidebar so we can easily carry them off and on the trailer. And these again, they need a separate jack. We don't have the, the stand. The trigger mechanism on these ones, uh, for these ones is on the floor. It has two holes to tie bait into. Um, and it's kind of hard to see, but there's a really shallow water dish on the bottom of these traps. These traps are older. I think they were there even before 1993. So, um, definitely could use some, some updates. So yeah, this very shallow water dish on the floor, there's no drain plug. So bears are always filling it with straw, um, and it's you know not easy to clean out. So ideally, these would be higher um, and deeper with the drain plug. They have pretty big windows though, um, so and the bars are spaced far enough apart, so it's really easy to uh, get your jab stick or your um, dart pistol through there, and a lot of good ventilation. Um, there's two holes on the side. I, it's kind of hard to see, but, um, we have pins that we put in to lock it open as, you know, a safety lock when we're in there. And then the box on the far side is a door lift stop mechanism. So again, it can't be opened once that door is dropped. And then these ones also have a pulley system to hook up the cape, to hook up, um, a cable with a carabiner to do releases. Um, so this, this is really nice because it helps to not put pressure on that frame and bend it um, or damage the frame itself. And these ones, um, they have really old dart ports that we keep permanently locked. They're really handy for putting in fresh straw and food if we're holding bears, like say we're holding a cub because it's going to go to a zoo. Um, this is really nice for that, but you definitely wouldn't want to use this with adult bears. Um, we've had bears stick their heads out. Uh, uh, my predecessor actually had, I guess, a bear escape one time through there. So they're not ideal. Um, and it's just more sharp edges for bears to catch their claws on. Um, so yeah, I, I would actually like to have these permanently welded shut. And then we have a family trap that we share with Glacier National Park. Um, Teton Welding also made this one. It's about 12 and a half feet long with a 42 inch diameter. Um, also aluminum, has metal leg stands uh, on all four corners. So you don't have to care, worry about carrying that other jack. And as you can see, it has the middle door. So ideally you're catching mom first. <laughs> Obviously doesn't always happen that way, but catching mom first. Then you kind of push her to the back, drop the middle door, and then reset, um, and hopefully catch the rest of the the cubs or cubs. Um, and then you can lift the middle door and let them be together when you're ready. And it also has a slide out wooden ramp, which can get kind of slick in the summer um, or in the rain rainy months uh, or snowy months. So can be a hazard at times, but I do like that slide out style of ramp. It has safety lock and door lift stop mechanism box on the side. Uh, and it also can be locked to prevent people from tampering with it. Um, it has extra air vents on the front of the trap. And uh, something that's really important is warning signage. You want to make sure, yeah, you have big, bold letters, bright red. Um, you have a lot of people that get interested in these traps and when you want to walk up, look in, stick their fingers in. So um, warning signage is crucial. 
This one has water nozzles that you can hook hoses up to, which is really nice. So you can turn those off and on. Uh, it doesn't have drain plugs for those water troughs. So again, that water is just going to the bottom of the trap, but these traps do have drain holes. So um, don't have to worry too much about it pooling in the bottom. The front of the trap, um, the, the door of the trap has four small windows. They're about five by five. So it's really, visibility is not great. It's hard to see in there. And the bars are about three quarters of an inch apart. So it, they're hard to jab through. Um, but there are four other small windows on the tops of the trap. Um, so you can get a good view that way. And like I said before, like a shoulder shot um, or a neck shot. The front of the trap has a removable window cover, so you can shield from rain and snow when driving. So I really like that. Can also help with temp regulation and ventilation, you know, close it, open it. And it also can make bears feel more safe and less on display. Again, this trap's really great with, you know, really smooth surfaces on the inside. You can see those top windows um, from, from this picture. Uh, yep, yeah, we got the two water troughs with smoothed out edges, and this one does have a floor treadle. It's We don't really use it that often. It's not super reliable because it often gets a ton of straw underneath it and other debris, so it just ends up not working. But and then you can see those drain holes there also. And with this trap, I can either tie bait to the ground or have it hanging, whichever I, I usually end up dragging. Um, half a deer carcass into the back and tying it in on the on the ground so then we have two steel traps uh, made by damon designs they're local here in the flathead um, they also help maintain and fix up our other traps um, i really like these ones but they are since they're steel they're really heavy uh, so they're not easily uh, maneuverable they do have aluminum doors though, because if we were to have a steel door, I mean, that would be extremely heavy um, and unsafe for, for the bears. Um, so yeah, about eight feet in length, which is your standard size. And this trap, these, these do not have water troughs, but they do have drain holes. And then they have the safety lock box with a door lift stop mechanism as one. And it has a roller bearing tip to eliminate any drag as the door falls. So most of our traps have that. Um, the trigger mechanisms hanging uh, on the side on the right hand in the right hand picture, you can see the six holes. So again, I like that for making sure baits tied in really securely. They have small side jab ports, which are not ideal. You really can't use them for much unless the bear is sitting right there and you have someone kind of directing you where where to go because you can't yeah visibility is really tough with those there's no holes for ventilation up top um and this trap they're dark brown they get really hot in the summer so it'd be nice if we had more holes for ventilation and this is just a good example of this trap and why I like longer traps. I like ten, about 10 foot in length traps. Um, these are, yeah, they're eight feet. So some of these bigger males, they just reach in, grab the bait and their back ends are still hanging out. So the door drops and hits them and they kind of shimmy their way out of the trap. So yeah, eight feet, it, it's, it's good, but 10, nine or 10 feet would be better. And then we have two, or actually we have four small aluminum traps and we use these mostly for black bears um, or cubs or smaller sub-adults. They're about seven and a half feet long and 30 with a 36 dia inch diameter. And these do have water troughs with drain plugs, which is really nice. Um, so you can drain that water from the outside. And again, really lightweight traps. They're great. Um, for taking them off the trailer. Um, and they you can see we have the sidebars there. So 
overall, um, what I like most in traps, good ventilation, um, safety lock mechanisms. So the bears are staying in and I'm also not getting trapped in there when I'm doing what I need to do. Uh, good warning signage for the public, smooth surfaces. So bears, so we're trying to minimize uh, any injuries to the bears themselves. Um, good deep water troughs with drain plugs, bottom drains for all that excess water to drain out. And then, um, yeah, like I said before, ideal trap length would be nine to 10 feet. And that's it. I hope I did that in okay time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Justine. Yeah. All right. Um, now we're going to shift to Lindsay Mangepain. She's a polar bear biologist for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and has been working in wildlife for 15 years, all of them with bears. So go ahead, Lindsay. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, I, I work for Fish and Wildlife Service in our polar bear program. Um, Culver trapping is pretty new for our program. Um, most of our capture in the past has been um, aerial darting primarily for research purposes. Um, but over the last few years, we have started a culvert trapping program in the Prudhoe Bay oil field primarily to address human bear conflict issues. Um, so I'll, I'll share a little bit about the traps that we are using um, and kind of some pros and cons of each of them. So the first trap we had made um, was made by TriJet Precision Cutting in Palmer, Alaska. Um, and we were super excited to find TriJet um, just to have a manufacturer in Alaska because getting a trap up from the lower 48 is incredibly expensive and logistically challenging. So um, we're really, really happy to have found TriJet. Um, so our, our first trap we had made is uh, 10 feet long with a 48 inch diameter opening. Um, and we've added a remote control winch for um, releasing bears. And this has been really, really great for us because um, we work in Anchorage. We're really far away from the polar bears. So um, a lot of times when we have to go up for any sort of an emergency response event, um, we end up renting a truck. Um, so we don't really have your typical gear that you'd have on a field truck. So um, having a winch that's actually attached to the trap for, for releases has been really nice. Um, this trap has drainage holes that are a half inch big every foot along the trap so that um, any extra water or anything can drain out. Um, we have a pretty typical hanging bait setup, um, and the the total cost for this trap with the trailer was just under 18000 so um, pretty expensive. Um, Alaska prices, we also got it kind of right in the middle of the supply chain pandemic issues. So I think that had some, some impact on the pricing as well. So some pros with this trap. Um, so far, the size seems to be adequate. We haven't had any bears um, keeping a foot out the back or anything like that. Um, we haven't caught any super giant bears in it yet. Um, the biggest bears we've been catching have been around 700 pounds. So um, for that size, it seems to be pretty good so far. Um, most of the bears that um, we're trapping in conflict situations seem to be sub-adults. Um, that's the bulk of it. So um, a little bit smaller, but um, yeah, we get a bigger thousand pound bear, we might rethink the size, but so far it's been good. Um, I do like that this trap has a lot of options for jabbing or darting. We've got a window on the front and the back and then two on each side. So that gives you a lot of flexibility, which is great. Um, so far, these traps have seemed like they've had pretty solid construction overall, um, other than the trigger mechanism, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, another thing with this trap we really like is there is a removable housing that goes over the external part of the trigger mechanism. So that way, if a bear is at the front um, checking the bait out through the window, it can't hit that trigger and accidentally make the trap door close. So that's that's a really nice uh, feature. Um, this, this trap can also be lock closed. So, um, where we're working in the oil field when bears are recovering, um, they're, they're nice enough to usually let us keep them inside somewhere, but, um, it's not really restricted access. So, um, having it, having it lock closed is, is nice just to have that extra level of security. Um, and then again, the remote control winch is a really, really nice feature. 
Um, some cons. Um, so there, there wasn't any external housing for the winch battery on this trap. Um, so we ended up just putting the battery in an ammo box that we attached, which seems to work fine, but um, a, a more secure and structured box would be really great to add to this. Um, we didn't like the window bars on this one. Um, the bars seemed to be a little bit too far apart and the bars themselves were too narrow. Um, so a bear can definitely get a tooth around it. Um, so we're trying to redesign those windows and replace them so that we can avoid that. Um, the trigger me mechanism for this trap um, was way too complicated. Um, it had two pins that the door sat on, which as you can imagine, is just twice as many things that can go wrong. So we ended up pulling one of those pins out so that it's just kind of like a more traditional setup where it just sits on one, one pin that's attached to the trigger. Um, we also found out pretty quickly that we needed to add an extra brace on the door. Um, with the winch, it seemed to bend the door frame back um, when we were trying to release bears, which would cause the door to get stuck. So um, luckily we're working in the oil field and there are lots of welders around. So <laughs> we were able to add an extra support brace pretty easily, which seemed to solve that problem. Um, we also upgraded the winch cable for kind of a poly pro cable um, rather than the metal um, when it got fold out, the metal seemed to be kind of a pain to deal with. So the um, polypro cable was a big upgrade there. Um, one big con for this trap, um, as Justine mentioned, the safety mechanisms to either lock the trap open or lock it closed. Um, we don't have one of those on this trap, which is a bummer because that's a really, really nice feature. So um, we usually end up sticking a random screw or where we can find in a hole just to kind of act as a lock. Um, but it would be nice to have one that's a little bit, bit stronger on there. Um, and then another con is this trap is just, it's super loud when you're driving down the road. And I think that's probably common with a lot of light aluminum traps. And I'm not sure if there's really a fix for that, but um, kind of a con for this one. Our second trap um, was actually a collapsible trap that we had had sitting around our warehouse for years that had never been used. Um, so we decided to modify it so we could um, bring it up and use it in the slope. So it's the same size as the other trap that we had made 10 feet long with a 40 inch diameter opening. Um, it does have a hanging bait um, similar to the other one. Um, this one does actually have um, that safety mechanism. So that is really good. Um, the trigger is just a traditional setup with one pin um, that has seemed to work pretty well. Um, so for modifications, we did add a remote control winch um, and a battery uh, box to hold the battery. So that's a much better setup than our first trap. We also updated the windows. So um, they're actually made out of a solid piece of aluminum rather than individual bars. Um, and they just kind of cut holes in the solid piece. And that seemed to be a lot easier for them from a manufacturing setup. Um, and then it also ended up being a lot less expensive because it took them less time to make. Um, and then they just weld that solid piece into the trap. So we're pretty happy with that. Um, we also added some drainage holes to this trap. Um, and then we also just welded it solid so it was no longer collapsible. So it was just one, one solid tube. Um, so altogether, these modifications ended up costing about 7,500. And this is what the trap looked like before we modified it. Um, so you can see it kind of breaks up into um, eight different pieces. And in theory, this is a really great idea um, for us just because a lot of the spots where bears are, are remote, um, you can only get there by plane or boat. So this is a good option for if you need to get a trap somewhere. Um, but the way that it, it got put together, um, use these, these hooks. Um, and they're pretty flimsy. They bent really easily and they would come undone without much effort. Um, so none of us really felt very confident in a big bear getting in this trap and it's staying in one piece. So um, that was why we we just decided to weld it solid and not have it um, have the option of collapsing anymore. Um, this trap also had a pretty fancy cub stop mechanism on the door um, that had CO2 and the idea was if the the bottom of the door hit a bear's back, um, some stops would come out on the side and that would be powered by the CO2 and that would slow the door down um, and prevent injury to the bear. Um, but we could never really get it to work um, and it just added a lot more weight to the door. So we ended up just kind of cutting all that out, but 
I think it's a really good idea in theory, um, with maybe some some tweaks to the design to get it to work more reliably. So our wish list for the future, um, we want to modify the windows again. Um, I think one thing we want to add is a slide so that you can com completely close the windows off. Um, we've had some bears that are just so worked up and they just bite and bite and bite at the bars. So I think having a way to block that off. So if you do have a bear that's trying to do that, you can just not have any risk of injury on the window bars. So um, we're planning to do that this winter. Um, we also would really like to have a flat bottom trap. Um, for a lot of the bears that we catch that are bigger, we don't take them out of the trap just because we're afraid we won't be able to get them back in. Um, so having a flat bottom would make that a lot easier. Um, and I also think it might be a little bit easier on the bears. It seems like um, the time of year we're catching bears in the fall mostly, um, they have a pretty slow metabolism and it takes them a long time to recover from the drugs. So a flat bottom might just be easier on them while they're laying in there for a long time. Um, and then we want Mike's remote trigger. We want those on all of our traps. Um, the way that we're trapping is pretty much all, um, we're never leaving traps unattended. We're always sitting and watching them um, up in the oil field just because of um, safety concerns that they have. So um, yeah, that would be a really nice feature to add. And I won't spend too much time on this, but um, if anybody wants any more information on these, I can I can send it to you. Um, but we do have a polar bear holding cage that is primarily intended for oil spill response. Um, and this is pretty cool. Um, it's a big uh, holding area, and then there's two detachable pods on each end that you can use if you um, need to ship a bear somewhere, um, either for cleaning or permanent placement at a zoo. Um, and this whole thing breaks down to fit into a 20 foot connex. So it's it's relatively portable um, for deploying in different areas. So um, it's a pretty cool tool. Luckily we haven't had to use it yet. Hopefully we'll never have to use it, but it's really good to have um, if, if an oil spill were to happen. Um, and then lastly, we do also um, have a few cub transport crates. Um, these actually belong to Alaska Clean Seas, which is a group up on the slope that does a lot of the spill response and emergency response work. Um, but they let us use these and they're awesome. Um, they're basically modified high anxiety dog crates. Um, and there's a large one and a small one. Um, the large one can be shipped as freight and the small one can actually be um, checked on a passenger airplane, um, just like a dog. Um, and they've been modified to have um, a guillotine door about two thirds of the way down. So you can open that front door and put in um, fresh bedding or food um, if you have to hold the bear for any amount of time. So um, yeah, these are really great. We ended up using one for an orphan cub uh, last year um, and we were really happy with it. So i um, happy to share those specs if anybody's interested too. Um, and that is all I have, so. Katie Martin is the deer, bear, and turkey biologist for Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources. And she's been working with wildlife for 15 years, 12 of those with bears. So she's going to close us out because um, she's going to be talking about both Cambrian and culvert traps. Mine is uh, kind of short and sweet because you guys have hit on all the cool stuff with both types of traps. So I was just kind of summing it up from a state that uses a little bit of both of those. Uh, so we primarily use culvert traps, like the one seen here, this aluminum culvert trap that's about seven and a half feet long, 42 inch diameter opening, um, has two inch holes drilled all throughout the sides and the bottom of it. And then I've got some pictures in a bit that show the back that have got a mesh panel um, because here in Virginia, it does get pretty hot. But I just like this picture because the bear is definitely reading that and thinking not going in. It says caution bear trap. Uh, so again, yep, culverts are kind of our bread and butter. That's what we use for most things because they are so easy to transport. We Most of the places we're trapping, uh, it's kind of hard to get a trailer into. We're going to be pretty remote. So it's just nice we can throw those culverts on the back of the truck and take them out somewhere. And they're pretty, quote unquote, foolproof. Uh, you can teach somebody how to set these culverts really easily. They work a lot of the time. We just not a lot of moving pieces to go wrong or to break on them. But um, around 2021, we kind of had some people interested in trying out the Cambrium design and said, hey, you know, let's let's try this out. So we said, all right, let's 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 give it a whirl. That's a pretty neat trap. We saw Florida was using them. A couple other states had them. And so we went out and got a 
the first one here is actually just a prototype that was built for us in Virginia for us to purchase metal products. We have to go through our state prison system. So our correctional enterprises builds has to build all of these for us, which um, there's some pros and cons to that. They do a great job, but making modifications and working with them sometimes can be a little bit difficult. So this was the first one we got. And as you can see, different from what they showed you in Florida, the bottom half is just a solid panel instead of the more mesh panel. Um, we've already changed that in our next design. And so uh, it didn't take us long to realize we wanted to make a few changes there. And then we do have a portable, I call it the baby or the truck bed style Cambrian. We'll also show some pictures of that we can use. Again, just put it on the truck bed and move it around. But it operates the same way as this trailer based one. So for us, you know, deciding if we want to use a trailer trap or, or a culvert trap or which one to use, it's all just, you know, what is our location going to look like? And then what are we planning on doing to that bear? Is it getting immobilized? Is it just getting transported? Are we putting it down? So all of those really go into that decision of which trap to, to use. And again, the purchase process, I'm sure for everybody, working for government is uh, not easy. And so that has been uh, a lovely thing to learn how to get through with uh, getting traps built. So here is our latest version of the cane room traps. As you can see, we've already switched out to that full mesh sided. Um, you know, as you look, this trail camera image, it was 93 degrees. The date is wrong. This was not in January. This was in July of 2023. And so it's pretty hot here. So we wanted it more open. Um, like you saw those Florida ones as well. And so we have had success with the traps, but I have also had a lot of issues with the trigger mechanism on these traps. So that was kind of what I was going to point out or just a few uh, problems we had had with it, you know, just with bears that weren't pulling on the trigger hard enough or due to how heavy the door system is. So again, to this one, the trigger runs along the top. The first model we got, they actually had the trigger, the cable run into the bottom of the trap. And we just found that it, with the bait laying on the bottom, our bears, I guess, are just super lazy and would just go in and eat it and they never pulled on anything. So we decided to run it up to the top and that way they do actually have to pull on the bait, which helped out. Uh, this bear, she's checking out the side panel darting door. So we've got four darting or immobilization doors on the traps that slide. So they've got a lock through them. Then you can just unlock them, slide it just as enough as you need to, to either, you know, if they're depending on where they are, you might be able to use your syringe pole or most of the time in these traps, we're using a Dan inject pistol. Um, but she's, uh, she's checking out the dart door. So to see how that works out. And in this picture, she's up in there, and I know it's a little hard to see, but in the back left of that trap, the bait bag is being pulled. There's a white canvas bag back there that she's pulling on, and she's pulling it. She will end up getting the bait, and she never gets caught. So I already have made a note from what Mike talked about, about the Dynamo-type cable to use, because ours is definitely getting hung up. Um, we've noticed if it's super rainy and we get like a rainy summer when we're doing some trapping and that trap sits there for a day or two and doesn't get triggered, it kind of jams up. The door just won't, won't fall unless you really, really give it a hard pull. Um, so that has just been one thing I get really annoyed when I come back to a trap site and I see the bait's gone and I look at my trail camera and... There was a bear hanging out in it and she did not get caught. So we've still got to do some modifications just to get a little more comfortable that that trigger is going to going to go off most every time a bear is in it. Um, so here she is with her cub. She's getting a few more snacks, but does not get caught in the trap. But nobody, you know, again, these bears were not scared by the trap. They had no issue getting in and out of it. So it was nice. We ended up, we did end up catching these bears a little bit later. Um, this was all just part of a research project and so not conflict or anything. So, you know, they, they had a good experience in the trap getting some snacks. They just didn't get caught the first time. Uh, so here's just another look at it, you know, close up with that trigger running off of the top now instead of the bottom. 
and then the sliding immobilization door. So again, it's just a pin, a lock and pin mechanism, and you can just slide them. The first doors we had on the sides opened outwards, which as you can imagine, you open it up, a bear sees a little bit of daylight and they come rushing to that hole as well. So we said, hey, let's make those sliding instead of open outdoors. <laughs> so now they slide, that seems to work really well. Um, so we really like that. This is just um, if you're at the what is the front of the trap, how the the bait, the trigger looks like as it's hanging in there. So it's just this loop that we attach these canvas bags to that we put the bait in. Um, this is attached with a bunch of zip ties. That loop is down far enough so that if a bear is standing in there, the, the loop will not close. So it's not going to hang a bear, but it's also low enough if a bear is standing in there and, and somehow wanted to put its head through the loop as bears are known to try to get into things, it's not going to hurt anything. But that's just what it looks like as it comes out of the, the piece of the steel on the outside. And to show it works, there is a bear from this summer, a big male that we caught in, in this newer trap that we got. Um, we have found, especially for big males, this guy was like 382 pounds. And our little culvert traps, he wouldn't have fit. He would have uh, done like I think Justine showed where it just stood on the edge and could reach in and get the bait and not get caught. So in these bigger traps, certainly it works nice for those big guys. And so this is just a picture of uh, the baby Cambrian that can go on the back of the truck. So it's the exact same build, same model, just much smaller version um, and is, is made to fit on the back your truck bed so it's got a ramp that goes with it so it'll slide up it sits on two like little ski runner type feet and then the feet are adjustable so you can adjust the sides of it to kind of get it level and everything and this right now we've had some success with yearling bears um, we do some cub rehab and bears go to a center and then come back out in the spring and so this is the trap we use at that center to get those guys back out of the rehab facility to turn them back loose so has worked well for yearling sized bears or smaller larger bears just the way that cambrian door sits where it swings up um, when you've got a trap like this sitting on the ground, that door is too low. So a normal sized bear just walks up to it and will like bump its head into the door and then just back away. So a, a larger than probably a hundred pound bear would actually have to duck down to go under the door. So have not had any success with it on a larger bear, but could probably make this a little bit bigger and, and maybe do some modifications there. So again, just a side look of it. Again, same exact, it looks almost identical to the one that's on the trailer, just miniature version and can slide on the truck and then we can move it around out in the field. But again, for us, mostly what we're using are just these pretty, I guess I would say old school culvert traps that have been around forever. And you know, they work great, except that bears sometimes just have other ideas and aren't always interested in getting trapped. So every once in a while they don't work out the best, but they are pretty simple. Um, you know, yep, you get your possums and your raccoons that get caught. That has been one of the nicer things with that Cambrian style trap. We don't get much bycatch at all. Uh, of course, with the culverts, we get a lot of possums, raccoons, and, and other critters in there. But the possum on the left-hand side is actually sitting on the trigger. So it's a very easy trigger mechanism that just attaches to the door, guillotine style door that comes down. So nothing too complicated and that possum's hanging out, having a great time on it. But the reason we like them so much is that most of the time they just work really well. Um, pretty safe for the bears here in Virginia, even though it does get pretty warm, we've got them that graded end on it that's pretty open, gets good airflow through it. And then let's see. Um, so just real simple, not much to break on them. They're pretty lightweight. Again, that aluminum, so we can move them around where we want to go and are able to work bears using all of those holes just as a syringe pole spot there. And with that, that's all I got. All right. Thank you, Katie. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, one question is how heavy is that portable Cambrian style? Uh, so it's definitely heavier than the culvert traps because it is, it's not aluminum. It is, um, 
pretty heavy metal. So I would say, oh gosh, weight wise, probably 75 to 100 pounds is what that thing weighs. So we'd love if we could get them to build it with more of the mesh paneling instead of just the straight up metal, it would certainly lighten it up, but it's pretty heavy. All right. Um, and we've got Trisha's asking mesh versus window bars. And I'm assuming that's for, for most of you guys. Uh, comments about use preference, ease of use versus bare injuries, et cetera. So I'll, I'll take a quick shot at the uh, mesh part. Um, so if you notice uh, on our traps, um, we actually have the, uh, the, the mesh that goes, uh, actually just let me uh, quickly share my screen again. Um, so if you look at this, this is, um, uh, the mesh is actually going kind of sideways. <clears throat> um, if you put it straight up and down, you'll get where they'll catch their claws um, and actually potentially desheath their claws. But, um, but if it's this way, all they really do is just sort of grate the tips of their claws off when they're scratching at the cage. Um, we have very, very few injuries uh, to speak of. Um, I think maybe we've had one or two de-sheathed claw um, and maybe a broken tooth over the years, but very, very few injuries um, c considering we're putting, you know, really angry, aggravated, and sometimes really large bears inside these traps. So, uh, you know, um, and, and just really quickly, Katie, this is uh, one of the things that um, we do to help drop that door is actually we put a bucket hanging from a bucket and you could put water bottles inside to weight the bucket to drop that to, for like, so if the mom's in there and then she could, when she hits that bucket, the cub will be inside with her. So anyway, just the, just a thought. Uh, any other panel talking about the bars versus the mesh? Yeah, I'll, I'll just add that, um, yeah, the bars, I think as long as you can have them close enough that a bear can't get its tooth around them, I think it's fine. Um, I like the bars just for being able to to jab. I think it's a lot easier to get in. Um, but yeah, if the bars are too far apart, I think, I think you can run into issues for sure. Justine? Yeah, none of our traps have mesh, so I've never actually used it. But I, I think, you know, when I've seen the mesh siding before, I've always been um, uh, curious and um, cautious in the idea of using that just because of, yeah, um, breaking teeth and uh, breaking claws on it. So, um yeah, I only have the bars, but uh, I I guess I, I would lean towards the bars if I were to have to choose. <laughs> All right. And uh, Paul, uh, you got your hand up? Yeah, I just, a conversation that we have, well, first, thanks everybody for this. This was really good. Um, a conversation that we have here a lot of the time is whether or not it makes a difference if you leave the trap on the trailer or if you push the trap off the trailer. Do you, do you guys have any thoughts on that, folks who've done a lot of this work? We, I guess I us, we always, uh, okay. our, our traps are bolted to the trailers and we leave them there. They're all culvert traps. Yeah, we always leave ours on the trailer too. I think with a big polar bear, I don't think taking it on it is really with an option for us, but um, we're we're watching all of our traps. And um, I mean, it, uh, for the most part, it seems like bears, at least in that situation, aren't, aren't super cautious or worried about the trailer and they go in fine. And we've actually taken the ramps off um, because we had some that were like the, the mesh wire. Um, and mostly we took them off just because they were kind of a pain in the butt to set up, but um, yeah, that that seems like it could be maybe something that they would have more more issues with. But just stepping up into the trap has seemed to work pretty well for us. Same with us. 
it, our our traps are actually built on a trailer frame, so they um uh they're permanent on there. Yeah, all of ours are bolted. Um, our trend team does have two new traps. I was going to talk about those, but I was short in time. So um, they actually don't have theirs bolted and they lift theirs on and off um, the traps and leave them or off the trailer and leave them um, when they set them. I, yeah, I like the, I, I like just leaving them. I, I think it's easier to just set, uh, go drive in, back in, set, set do what you need to do um and just drive away leave it and yeah not mess around with some of these bigger bears that are in the traps and then having to get it back on the trailer yeah and uh, yeah I, and we also have two the two big steel traps those ramps we can take those off so sometimes we do you know and especially if you're backing up into a higher ground um we'll take the the ramp off so it just goes even with the ground um or sometimes we actually back up two traps together and then set the ramps kind of on top of each other if we're trying to catch a family group makes it easier you know one cub gets caught and they kind of go walk in and out of the traps um i don't know if that makes if i'm making sense but um so yeah <laughs> Yeah, All thanks. Right. It's just I figure, you know, as motivate food motivated as bears are, it probably doesn't matter. And they tend to be fairly accustomed to human uh, features in most of their ranges. So I, I didn't figure it would matter, but it's just it's a conversation we always have. So I thought I'd throw it out to you guys. Thanks for getting. Hey, Paul, before they move on, I, I just wanted to add, uh, we used to have a couple of research traps in Florida where you could drop the trap. It was not on a flatbed trailer. It was on a, a trailer kind of hung it from the top. Uh, and that was the idea that you could take it off, uh, really. So originally, the idea was you would buy fewer cages and, uh, sorry, more cages and fewer trailers. You drop it, unhook it, and drive off with it. Um, we rarely ended up taking it off the hook, but... I would drop it down to the ground because we could, and I thought it'd be more stable. And we seem to catch a lot of bears either way. So I, it does make sense that you'd think a bear that's never seen a trap might walk into one on the ground more, but you know, they, they ended up making the step if they want to either way. David, it's Garth. Hey Garth. I'm just wondering about the treadle on that one trap. So I've already forgotten who was talking. Justine, when Justine was talking, she talked about a treadle in the bottom. I didn't understand what the treadle did. Mm. Is that where she hooked up the bait, Justine? Is that where you hooked the bait to? Or what was that for? The treadle. So it, so it has a pin that goes underneath. And um, so ultimately, yeah, the bear steps on that treadle and then the door drops. Ah, okay. Um, so it's a second. It's a second mechanism for for closing the door. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, but like I said, you know, straw and debris get stuck under it, so it often doesn't work um, very well. <laughs> Which, yeah, it's a it's a great idea, you know, for those bears that are trap savvy and don't want to pull on the bait. But um, yeah, <laughs> something oh, wow. to to consider yeah and garth the uh cambrians also have treadle and you could you could hook it either as a bait pole or you can hook it as a treadle and a lot of the new ones that we've had um you have options for both so you just unhook one and click onto the other if you have if you want a preference yeah i can see that working for those males that are trying the, the sneaky ones for sure thank you All right, and uh, Trisha, in the comments, um, interested in more information on modifications uh, for Mike, what's the best contact information? So um, if you guys are comfortable with it, you can put your uh, panel members, if you want to put your um, uh, email address in here, that'd be great. Mike has done a lot of modifications on the original Cambrian design. So if you're thinking about Cambrian, 
I highly recommend you talk to him versus just grabbing it off of the KMU website. Can I just jump in here, Dave? Yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah. No, some some great ideas here, and uh, I love to see the uh, modifications um, that, that Mike has come up with too. We we have uh, in the province ninety eight Cambrian traps across the province, um, and a, a number of uh, Cambrian cub traps. Um, you know, dog slash cub traps, uh, and we have some portable traps that are um, we set on remote areas uh, on islands and so on wilderness areas. So, you know, love to share um, some of the ideas we've come up with, but really love to see uh, the others' ideas too. Um, and we we recently um, made five uh, polar bear traps, really similar to Lindsay's, uh, and they're they're uh, designed to be um, slung under the helicopter uh, and and taken to remote areas. So, really um, great ideas here and, and information sharing. I think. We could uh, well, certainly we could uh, learn some uh, things that you folks have done. So this is a great call. And uh, Charlotte asked, I'm curious about the portable traps since so much of where we work in Alaska is not accessible by road. Would these be for research, not conflict? Yeah, the portable Cambrian trap, I guess. I'm assuming that's the only one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, for us so far, the size of it, it's been for mostly yearlings or small bears. So from a research project for that or taking out orphan cubs or something that we're releasing. Um, but I think they've got some good use. If we can get them tweaked a little bit, get them a little bit lighter, get them up a little bit taller, they would be great traps for just, you know, general research purposes or even conflict trapping. I mean, we have found that people like the look of that Cambrian trap better. It makes, if you are trapping in a more urban area, that seems like a, a nicer looking trap from the public when they look at it and they see that door, it doesn't freak them out as much, it seems so. <laughs> Um, uh, Brian, and then I guess we got to close it out. Brian, go ahead. I was just going to uh, bring up when Mike talked about the mesh uh, and welds, I, I can't remember exactly what Mike ended up fixing on some of our research traps. We did have some of our mesh sides pop off, um, and I thought we should bring that up. Mike, wasn't it the, that they didn't weld it properly the first time? Do you remember what it is they didn't do right? Was it a not a wrong temperature or something? Yeah, no, I mentioned it in my presentation. We had a bad batch of uh, metal. It was thinner than the other uh, things. Um, and uh, we ended up having them replace the metal on that. So once we got that squared away, I think it was all it was all done. All right, I wasn't sure if that was the same cause as the ones we had, because I thought that was a yeah, spot weld I mean, or something. But it was a weak I mean, metal. These are, they're bear traps, you know, and so they're machines we got to do maintenance and stuff on. and. So you got to keep an eye looking at the tack welds and all the welds. You know, everybody seems to have trap maintenance issues that they have to do. Uh, yeah, if you're not paying attention, the, the big bears aren't don't seem to be our, our problem. It's the females that are inside with like yearlings on the outside and they go ballistic in the traps. And if you don't pay attention to what the tack welds look like and the welds and all that, um, you know, you might have to take it into the shop and get a tack weld replaced here and there. So. Trap maintenance. I mean, we're catching bears for crying out loud. So you know, it's a, it's a, you know, um, these are big, powerful animals. You got to keep up with it. But yeah, that's uh, we we seem to got that fixed. All right, I was I brought it up because I thought maybe it was a a quality control issue and finding a good welder to get it from instead of just yeah. any available. Well, that's always helpful too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, that was it. Dave, I have right. two comments. Go ahead, Carl. Quick, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, Richard has still not re responded to who he works for or last name. Richard, if you can hear me. Yeah, Carl, I'm actually typing in the uh, response to Dave, as you mentioned that. Um, I'm Dick Scheidler, retired Alaska Department of Fish and Game, but I'm using my home computer, so I'm uh, not using my formal name. I'll Next time, I'll uh, fi fix that before we have the... Thing. I would like I would like to add one thing real quickly too. For the we always culvert trap with a with a uh, 
the trap was part of the trailer. It was all one system, but we had jack stands on the back because one of the things we found out was if you're on a trailer and you just have the front stand, big bear will come, it'll vibrate the trailer or bounce it a bit when it steps in. And so we ended up putting jack stands on the back just to stabilize it. I have a question. Uh, Lin Lindsay mentioned uh, the safety device, the cub stop on her traps. We also have those on two or three of our traps. And uh, like Lindsay, we remove them. Uh, they never seem to work correctly. Uh, not that we ever had a cub get hit, uh, but they uh, th they added an extreme amount of weight to the doors, and sometimes the the air would leak out, things like that. So we removed all those things. But is, has anybody ever had cubs get hurt by a by a guillotine door or killed by a door? That's interesting. Okay. We, we did have one cub a couple of years ago that um, had its foot stuck under the door and it ended up um, kind of breaking where the toes were. But other than that, I've not had any other negative experiences. Okay, thanks. We did, I was trapping in a foxhound training enclosure and killed a red fox that did have the guillotine door come down on the little red fox, but never a bear cub or anything with the bear. But Yeah, this is uh, Dick Scheidler. I can't find my hand thing on my screen. So uh, the, the reason we went to a swing door with our culvert traps, and this was, I hate to say it, back in the early 90s, um, it was because, and I don't know if I still even have the reference, but somebody did kill a cub, a grizzly bear cub, with a guillotine door. So um, you guys are all too young to probably remember any of this stuff. So, but I think it, it'd be interesting to if, to find that if somebody knows where that reference is. But and it could have been just a word of mouth thing. Okay. Uh, Dave, we have one, uh, Jeremy Inglis posted a comment. Uh, I'm not sure if we could easily come up with an email list unless somebody has a better idea. But what I was going to ask the presenters to do, if they are willing, is to PDF their presentations and send them to me. Uh, and then if everyone agrees, we can post those through the manager's forum email if that's a workable solution. Yep, that would be great. And and maybe uh, Carl, um, maybe I could email you or uh, Dave or both of you with some of the, um, the suggestions I have there. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Right, turn over to you, Carl. Well, uh, if that is it, we're gonna go ahead and close this out. And uh, appreciate everybody joining today. We went a little bit over, but I think it was well worth it. Um, we will post this to the IBA YouTube channel here in a few days. Uh, so if that is it, no more last minute questions. I'll go ahead and end, end the webinar. <laughs>